Welcome to Diabetic Retinopathy. What is it and are you at risk? At Diabetes Eye Health, my name is Casey Kaufman and I'm pleased to serve as moderator for this program. I'd like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Deborah Schlossman, Assistant Professor of Ophthalmology at Harvard Medical School. She also sees patients at Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Schlossman will discuss the connection between diabetes and your eyesight. Thank you so much, Casey. Diabetes can affect every structure in the eye. Uh, the, the lens is a structure in the front part of the eye that's usually clear, but over time it can become cloudy, and that's known as a cataract. The lens is very important for focusing the light on the retina, which is the back of the eye. Fluctuating vision is very common in diabetes, and this is because as blood sugars fluctuate, the lens in the eye can swell, and this can impair its ability to focus properly. Because of this, we recommend that people with diabetes have stable blood sugars for four to six weeks, if possible, before get having an eyeglass prescription. Otherwise, the prescription may not be accurate. The optic nerve is a structure in the back part of the eye. Glaucoma is a process where high eye pressure over time can damage the optic nerve and cause visual loss. People with diabetes are also much more likely to develop glaucoma than people without diabetes. The retina is the whole inside lining of the eye, shown in orange in this diagram. Diabetes can damage the blood vessels in the retina, and this is known as diabetic retinopathy, and that's what we're going to focus on tonight. The cavity of the eye is filled with the vitreous, which is part liquid and part gel. Diabetic retinopathy is the most serious eye complication of diabetes. Just as people with diabetes can develop damage to small blood vessels in other parts of the body, such as the nerves and the kidneys, it can, they can develop damage to the blood vessels in the retina. The retina is very important for proper visual function. In the top diagram, you can see the light coming in from outside being focused on the retina. In the bottom diagram, you can see a schematic of the image that the ophthalmologist sees when examining the retina through a dilated pupil. And using lenses and special instruments, we can actually have a very detailed view of all of the blood vessels uh, and the health of the retina. So high blood pressure and high blood sugar over time can damage the small blood vessels in the retina. And this can lead to two main complications. The first is that small blood vessels in the retina can close off or become uh, damaged. And this stimulates new blood vessels to grow. This seems like it would be a beneficial thing, but it's actually very dangerous because the new blood vessels are very fragile and they grow on the surface of the retina that, so they can bleed into the cavity of the eye. This is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Proliferative because it's the proliferation or growth of new blood vessels. And another term is neovascularization because there are new blood vessels growing. The second problem is that some of the uh, damaged blood vessels can leak fluid into the macula, which is the part of the retina responsible for detailed vision. So this is called diabetic macular edema. Macular because that's the part of the retina that's involved. And edema is just another word for fluid. So in the bottom photos, on the left, you can see a photo of a normal retina. So you can see the optic nerve is labeled, and the macula is right in the center. And again, the macula is the part of the retina responsible for very detailed vision. So if there's a problem in the macula, the vision will be blurry or distorted. The photograph on the right shows advanced retinopathy. You can see all of the blood vessels growing on the optic nerve, and you can see the yellow deposits in the macula, which is suggestive of fluid. The important thing to keep in mind is that this patient may have absolutely no symptoms unless there's fluid right in the central part of the macula. This patient may not know there's any retinopathy at all. Diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of new blindness in the working age population, and almost all of this blindness is preventable. Everyone with diabetes, whether type 1 or type 2, is at risk of developing diabetic retinopathy, but this risk can be greatly reduced with good blood sugar control and good medical management. Regular eye exams are crucial because, again, if these changes are picked up early, we have very effective treatments that can prevent blindness and preserve vision. We generally recommend a dilated eye examination at least once a year and possibly more often depending on what we find. And thank you, Dr. Schlossman, for that informative overview of diabetes and eye health. We do have a question that came in from the audience, and, and the question has to do with floaters. Um, I've been told that I have floaters. Does this have anything to do with diabetes? 
Floaters are very common. Almost everybody experiences some floaters, especially if you're looking at a blue sky on a sunny day. I'm very glad you um, said that. <laughs> <laughs> so floaters are usually just pieces of the vitreous or gel moving around, but if you ever notice a change in floaters, you should have it checked out because it can mean a retinal tear, and in the case of diabetes, if there's advanced retinopathy, it could mean there's a hemorrhage or bleeding inside the cavity of the eye. Good advice, and thank so. you very much. Thank you to Genentech for their support of this educational program. I'd like to remind you that additional videos are available at DiabetesEyeHealth.com. Thank you so much for joining us.